everybody, welcome to No DQ and A video here on NoDQ.com. I am the owner of No DQ Aaron Rift. Today is November 22nd. It is my birthday. I would like to thank you all for the birthday wishes, and uh, yeah, it's pretty scary. I'm actually turning 29 for those of you asking. Next year is going to be even scarier because I'll be both 30 and I'll be getting married next year, so that's going to be a real wake up call. I'm going to have my early midlife crisis. But, anyways, enough with that. Uh, we got a lot of wrestling to talk about. Very eventful Monday Night Raw this week, and um, let's get right into your questions. After Monday Night Raw, do you see R-Truth turning face? Well, that's what it looks like based on what happened on Raw. Awesome Truth is no more The Miz laid out R-Truth with the skull-crushing finale on the stage. And um, just as I started this video, word got out that R-Truth has been suspended by WWE for 30 days for violating the wellness policy. Uh, the news actually came out on Sunday that one of the main eventers had uh, failed a drug test, and it's believed that R-Truth was suspended due to uh, using synthetic marijuana, the same thing that Evan Bourne got suspended for, apparently. So yeah, it looks like uh, Truth is going to be selling the injury, aka suspended, for the next 30 days. And then uh, I guess we'll be seeing an R-Truth versus Miz feud. Um, we've talked about before on no dq &A video about... Uh, Miz turning face, but it looks like he's going to stay heel for the time being. I actually think it would be better off with Miz's face and Truth is heel, and I guess they could always uh, switch things around. But, I mean, based on Raw, it looks like Miz is going to uh, continue as a heel for the time being. So we'll see how that goes. Will Brodus Clay ever debut? That's a great question. I have no idea. It seems like every week they push back his return and... Uh, if he even debuts in 2012. I mean, at this point, they might as well just save him for the Rumble. I mean, they've put off debuting him. Why not use him as like a, a, you know, hype him up as an entrant for the Royal Rumble, just like they did in 2002 when they hyped up Goldust and Val Venus and Godfather. I think that would be a cool thing for the Rumble. And speaking of hyping up, here's the next question I got. Happy birthday, Aaron. What do you think of the two mysterious videos from last night's Raw? I know one was televised Kane and one wasn't. Y2J or Undertaker? My guess is it's Y2J because the Undertaker is too obvious. Your thoughts? Okay, well, first of all, about the untelevised one. WWE put up a YouTube video, and they flashed a quick link during Raw. And um, basically in the video, there's a little kid in the room and uh, in a schoolhouse or something talking about how on January 2nd, he's going to come back to take what is rightfully his. Now, um, if that's Undertaker, I'm not. does that mean the world title? He's coming back for the world title. Um, yeah, it does seem too obvious that it's Undertaker, so perhaps it's somebody else. Um, obviously, it's not Kane because they aired that other video regarding Kane. Um, I mean, I don't think it's Jericho. I highly, it's just, you know, it's kind of like a dark promo, so it's not really something Jericho would do. I I'm going to just say it's Undertaker because I'm not really sure who else it would be, but um, perhaps WWE will surprise us and. Uh, Throw out some ideas. Leave a comment on the YouTube page. Uh, let me know who you think it's going to be. Um, and as far as Kane's promo goes, uh, it showed uh, Kane looking at a mirror. He punched the mirror, and then as the glass was falling to the ground, there was also a flaming mask. So that seems to indicate to me that he's coming back with the mask. Now, anything can happen. Maybe WWE would change plans, but um, that's, that's the rumor that's been going around for the last several months that Kane would come back and have one last run with the mask. And I think that's definitely the way to go. And, you know, lots of merchandise sales with that mask. So I think it's a good idea. And um, that's what makes sense based on the video. So we'll see what happens there. I, I definitely think that we're going to see Kane uh, come back with a mask, possibly by Royal Rumble. And I think it would be cool to build him up for that, just like with Brodus Clay and maybe a few other people. Do you see Christian having a decent World Heavyweight title run before he retires? Not really. I think that um, Christian had his his uh, big run. You know, he had that long feud with Randy Orton for four or five months. He got two uh, world title runs uh, during the feud. So I, I think that's as far as WWE is going to go with him. I mean, he was basically a glor glorified mid-carder holding the World Heavyweight title. And, um, you know, he's just getting older. But I, I think it's cool that Christian did... If only for a brief time, he did get to live his dream and be the world champion. So I think that was cool. And, you know, he, he did get rewarded for all the years of hard work. So, you know, I, I think it's all good for Christian. And uh, 
I, I do think his career is going to start to be uh, slowing down in the next couple of years with him getting up there in age, and I'm sure he'll be sticking around WWE in one way or another doing uh, doing uh, training or behind-the-scenes work, something like that. Hey, Aaron, what was your favorite in-your-house pay-per-view? I'm going to have to say uh, Good Friends, Better Enemies, just because it was uh, Razor Ramon, Scott Hall's last match in WWE before going to WCW, and of course... Shawn Michaels versus Diesel, which, which, which was also Diesel's last match. And uh, that match was one of the all-time classic WWE matches, in my opinion. Love that match between Shawn Michaels and Diesel. And Diesel, I mean, that was probably Nash's best match, in my opinion. I mean, he really had his work shoes on for that match, and uh, he busted his ass. And that's, uh, you know, questionable with Kevin Nash sometimes as to how hard he's really trying. But in that match, he, gave, he definitely gave, you know, his best effort. And Shawn Michaels was just Shawn Michaels. So, yeah, um, awesome pay-per-view. And I also liked, I believe it was the last in your house uh, with the house set and everything. It was the uh, the pay-per-view before, I think it was the original, uh, what was it called? I don't even remember the name of the pay-per-view. Um, but it was the one where uh, Bret Hart and the Patriot fought and uh, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker had their first match before Hell in a Cell. And um, it was all craziness with, the you know, them brawling over the place and everyone trying to control it, leading up to the Hell in a Cell. Back in the day when, uh, you know, the Hell in a Cell was actually the result of a previous event. You know, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker were uncontrollable in their feud and the, all the agents and stuff couldn't stop it. So how else do you uh, settle this? You put the two guys in a cell. That's back when it made sense. And uh, also on that pay-per-view, uh, Austin stunned Slaughter. That's when Austin's uh, whole snowball, you know, the whole snowball effect of him stunning one guy after another began. Uh, just awesome stuff right there. I was like, that was a pretty good, damn good pay-per-view. Why was Bret Hart's turn in 2005 so short? And what did you think of the fake Bret Hart return in 2005? I think HBK's heel turn was so short because it was only done for one reason, and that was because they were doing Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan, and Hogan's not going to get booed, so you got to turn Shawn Michaels heel. And it, it was really unfortunate because I thought that, that that brief period when Michaels was a heel was so freaking awesome. I loved it. Him doing the Larry King thing and, uh, you know, his promo in Montreal. Just, he was uh, amazing. I loved it. Every, each and every moment of it. And I was really sad when he went back to babyface after SummerSlam. But that's, that's the way it was. And um, the, the fake Bret Hart return in, in, you know, in Montreal, that was uh, one of the greatest heel moments for Shawn Michaels. To, to uh, tease everybody with Bret Hart only for his music to play and nothing happening. It was a, a, a work of art. That's all I can say. And um, unfortunately, the problem is people were expecting Bret Hart at that point. So uh, they shouldn't, I don't know if they should have done that unless they had Bret Hart available for SummerSlam. Because everyone was thinking that Bret Hart was going to do some sort of run in at SummerSlam and cost Michaels the match, which would have, you know, would have uh, made perfect sense. But it, it never happened. And it was a missed opportunity. And I guess Bret was still upset with WWE at the time. And that's why it didn't happen. Do you think that CM Punk was meant to turn face after his shoot? Watching his shoot again, it seems like WWE did not want him to become a face, but the fans turned him face. What do you think? Um, I actually believe that he was, uh, they were going to turn him face because they knew that when he did that shoot promo, people were not going to boo him for that. They were going to cheer him. So going in, they knew that was going to happen. And I think they said, okay, we're just going to turn Punk face with this. There's no way he's going to be healed after doing this shoot promo. That's, that's what I think was the uh, situation in WWE. All right, that does it for today's No DQ and a video. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone for checking out the show. Leave a comment, youtube.com slash no DQCAW. And thanks again for all the birthday wishes. And I'll be back tomorrow with uh, a preview of the 2011 nodq.com year-end awards. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you next time.